So settle down onto your backs and just take a moment to, I suppose, to settle and arrive and to have a sense of how you're feeling right now. So you can lie however you like. It could be with your legs long or your knees bent. And we're going to do a few little sort of rocky, I suppose, twisty things on our backs, just really to loosen everything up a little bit to start with. So the first thing you could do once you've just given yourself a moment or two to settle, to arrive, to sense the contact of your body with the ground, is to then bring your awareness to your head and start to let your head roll a little bit to the right and to the left. And just very much easing your head from side to side. So no sense of pushing. Just keeping very much within an easy range of movement. What's comfortable for you today. And do this a couple more times. Let the head roll to the right and to the left. And then from rolling your head from side to side, find a comfortable place to settle the back of your head onto the ground. And let a breath come in, let a breath leave you. And if your legs are long, you're then going to bend your knees and stand your feet on the floor. And take a moment to feel the contact of your feet on your, the floor. I'd like you to have your feet um, a little distance apart. That's it. So there's some space between them, but not loads and loads of space. I suppose a sort of normal, you know, I don't like to say it these days, really normal hip width apart distance. And then you're going to start to let your knees tilt to the right and to the left. And just keep that easy and see how it feels. Hi Kate. We're lying down on our backs, tilting our knees when you're when you're ready. So yes, yeah, so letting the knees, a couple more times, letting the knees tilt to the right and to the left. And just, for most of us, this is a really familiar movement. So there's something just in that familiarity that helps us to settle and relax. It's sort of soothing to do these familiar things. And then just, once you've done that, perhaps once more to each side, Kate, you could do a couple more. Then you're going to pause in the center and you're going to let your knees fold into your chest. And you can hold around your knees. You can do a little bit of rocking. That's it, a little bit of rocking from side to side, if you like. That's it, a little bit of rocking from side to side. You could do a little bit of circling around the back of your pelvis. So really whatever feels nice, you know, whatever feels nice, whatever feels good to you in this position. I'm just gonna let one more person in at the door. So you could take your legs up to the ceiling and shake them out. That's another option. Yeah. Very nice, legs a little shake out. And then bring your feet back to stand on the floor. So knees bent, feet standing on the floor again. And then I'm, this time I'd like you to cross one leg over the other leg. So you're crossing your knees, that's it. And then you might want to adjust your standing foot so it's a bit more central. So Tracy, you're starting lying down a little bit, tilting your knees. Good, and then you're going to see how does it feel to tilt your knees with your legs in this position. So with one leg crossed over, that's it. You're rocking side to side on your standing foot. 
Tracy, just start by tilting the knees from side to side as they are. That's it. So those of you who've been a little, here a little while, you've got one leg crossed over, you're, you're tilting side to side on the standing foot. You're seeing how that feels. That's nice, Tracy. And when you're ready, what you can do is change the cross of your legs. So put the other leg on top and do the same movement with the other leg on top. And again, it might be you want to move your standing foot so it's a little bit more in the center. And that's it, come back to tilting the knees to the right and to the left. Yes, and Tracy, you can do the same thing So, with each knee on top. Just a couple more times, good. And then from here, you can lengthen both legs out on the floor for a moment. Give your leg, that's it. So uncross your legs, lengthen your legs out. Give your legs a little roll or bounce your knees a little bit. That's it. Good. And then we're going to bring the feet, bend the knees again and bring the feet to stand on the floor. So one last time. And this time take your feet wide. So they're as wide apart as the narrow edge of your mat. That's it, you can feel when you get there with your feet. And then start to take your feet a bit wider actually, Donna, I think. Yeah, and then start to tilt your knees here to the right and to the left. Good, and again, it's really up to you. This movement can be small or this movement can be larger and it depends what feels right for you at this point in the class, in the day, how your, <coughs> sorry, your <coughs> body is feeling right now. Good. Very nice. And in this movement, if it's comfortable for you, you can let your knees come all the way down on one side and leave them there. So let your knees come all the way down, let them be heavy. Tracy, you might just want to stay tilting, I think. Let them be heavy and let your head roll in the opposite direction to your knees. And just have a breath or two there. If it feels that you'll benefit from a cushion under either of your knees, are you okay there, Donna? Yeah, a cushion under either of your knees, you can slide one under. I can see plenty of cushions knocking around. Good. And you can do the same thing on the other side. So you can take your knees to the other side and have a couple of breaths there letting your head roll in the opposite direction. Well, I do say if you get too much air there, but it does seem yeah, warm. warm. It does actually seem warm today. Yeah, it's <laughs> With the heating on last night before you overcast. Mm -hmm. Ridiculous. Okay, good. So a couple of breaths with your knees going the other way. And then come back to the center and one last time, fold your knees into your chest. Hold around your knees, do a little bit of rocking side to side, rolling around the back of your pelvis, whatever you feel drawn to do in that position. You could also do a bit of taking your legs up to the ceiling and giving them a shake out. And what you could, yeah, very nice. What you could also do is a little bit of contemplating. With, um, we're going to be coming over into standing. So just before you do that, from lying on your back, you could just think about how you're going to come into standing in an easy and comfortable way. And yeah, and then make your way over into standing. Have you got some water on the chair? Oh, <laughs> do you like <laughs> What we're going to do in standing is this sort of loose, easy swinging twist, and then I'll grab you some water. Now, I keep thinking I should put it out, it's just people. Yeah, it's not, no, I should drink water these days, but I don't <laughs> think it's a huge problem. So, loose, easy swinging twist, letting your feet move while I grab some water for Donna.
it's funny, isn't it? Because the first few classes I did here, I was putting all the water out, and I was like, oh, nobody, nobody wants my water. <laughs> 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 so, I love the water. <laughs> okay, good. Very nice. So a couple of times, sorry, a couple more times, just swing your arms. And then we're going to settle down in standing. So have a look at your feet. Settle your feet down. Have a look at your feet. So feet a little distance apart. And then bring your hands, or yeah, stop looking at your feet. Bring your hands onto your pelvis and just take a moment to feel where your pelvis is. Because we're going to do some twists in a moment where we're not moving the pelvis. And then bring your hands to your low ribs. So I've got my fingers going around towards my back. And I'd just like you to have a couple of quiet breaths here. Close your eyes. See if you can feel your ribs here moving as you breathe in and out. So feeling your breath come in and widening those low ribs. And as you exhale, see if you can feel those ribs narrow. So close your eyes, just a couple of breaths here. We'll come back to a bit more of this later on. So maybe one more cycle of breath here. Feel the ribs wide and as you breathe in, feel the ribs narrow as you exhale. And then open your eyes and keep your hands on your low ribs and just try a little turning movement. So you're trying to leave your pelvis where it is, that's it. And just turn them to the left. So it's not gonna be a huge movement if your pelvis stays put. So it might feel a little bit frustrating, to be quite honest, that's it. So if we then take our fingers up onto our shoulders, we probably feel a bit less restricted because the shoulders can move a little bit more, even if the pelvis doesn't, good. That's it. And then from here, if we bring our fingertips up onto the crown of our head, we perhaps feel we can move even a little bit more. So the pelvis isn't moving, the ribs, the shoulders, the head are moving. And it probably all feels a bit unnatural. Yeah, we wouldn't do this in normal life. We <laughs> don't do this in yoga. Okay, let's let that go. Let's come back to <laughs> this one, swinging our arms and letting our whole body move. So this is far more, if we were trying to look behind us, this is far more what we would do in normal life, hopefully, <laughs> rather than just <laughs> the other strange ones. Good. So a couple more times, swinging your arms. Lovely. Yeah, really nice. Okay. And then we'll let that go and we'll settle back down again in standing. So again, we're going to come into a balance now. So start by looking down at your feet and then stop looking at your feet and come to a little bit of swaying. So again, you could close your eyes here, a little bit of swaying from side to side. And as you do so, you're keeping both feet on the floor, but you're rocking your weight over one leg and the other leg. And you're just going to, from doing this, make a choice about which leg and foot you'd like to stand on first. So that's number one thing. Number two thing is then bring your hands into prayer pose in front of you, front of your chest. I'm resting my thumbs on my breastbone. It seems to help me feel more steady. And now you're going to rock your weight onto your chosen leg and foot. And very simply to start with, you're going to bring your other foot to stand on that foot. Okay, good. And have a breath or two there. See how that feels. And then from here, if you like, you could then let your knee come out to the side. So from standing on your foot, you come into a mini tree pose. Good. You can see how that feels. And then you could try taking that foot a little bit higher up your inner leg. So the heel can maybe come sort of above the knee. That's it. Maybe not as high as you normally take it because we're not using our hands. And if you feel steady there, you could then let your arms grow up. Good. And let your shoulders drop down away from your ears. And have a couple of breaths there. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't matter if at any point you have a wobble. Just sort of find your way back into the balance. Good. Sort of soften and quieten through the front of your body. You could bring your hands back down into prayer pose in front of your chest. Good. And just see if you can settle here for another couple of cycles of breath. The breath come in, let the breath leave you. And then yes, whenever you're ready, come down, have a little shake out. 
And then we'll try that same thing on the other side. So there's always a certain amount of anxiety, I think, around, around that, you know, standing balances and, and what's going to happen as we come into the balance. So start by bringing your hands into prayer pose. Again, if you rest your thumb on your breastbone, that's that sort of steadying place, Kermanadi, and that can help. And then just start to bring your weight over the other leg and foot, good. And so the first thing we do very simply is the foot we just stood on, that foot comes to stand on top of our standing foot. And then we just see how is it to sort of settle here, to quieten, good. And then we could let our knee come out to the side a little, so into a mini tree, our foot's still at our ankle, we could just even have a couple of toes on the ground. Let the breath come in, let the breath leave. And then bring your foot a bit higher up. So your heel maybe comes above your knee. Good. Good. And then what about if the arms grow up? But the shoulders stay quiet and down. So really soften the shoulders, quieten the front ribs, soft and relaxed in the upper body as possible. Good. Let the breath come in, let the breath leave. Don't worry if you have a wobble. And your hands can come back down into prayer pose. See if you can be here for another breath or even two. Come down, have a little shake out. We're going to move now through a sequence. So come into the back of your mat. Yes, I think good time for a drink of water or tea. So we're going to come to the back of our mat. We're going to move down through the sequence. So if we start, start by settling our feet down. Bring your hands into prayer pose. How's your back doing, Tracy? Um, yeah. Okay. It's a little bit okay. Okay, we'll just take it easy. That's it. So feet a little distance apart, hands in prayer pose. Take a moment just to feel the contact of your footprints on the floor, the contact of your hands. See if you can feel the flow of your breath somewhere within your body. We let a breath come in and as we exhale, we'll take our arms down and then up. Drop the shoulders down away from the ears and then start to move forwards, gathering your elbows in, maybe bending the knees a little bit, down into a forward bend. So you could rest your elbows on your thighs, that's good Tracy, if your back, back is feeling a bit vulnerable. Have a couple of breaths in this forward bend. And then from your forward bend, you're going to be walking your hands forwards on the ground into dog pose. And then just sort of seeing, you know, seeing what presents itself to you in your body when you arrive in dog. So it could be that sort of tightness through the back of the legs, possibly the lower back. We're feeling it's tight there today. Possibly the shoulders. And yeah, a couple of breaths in dog. We'll be moving in and out of dog, so it's going to get better than this. I'm sure. I don't think that's feel a bit tight. Obviously, bend the knees as much as you like. And from dog pose, come down onto hands and knees. And once you're on hands and knees, settle there. You're going to then do some cat movements to start with. So you can come to some rounding your back and dipping your spine. Rounding and dipping in cat. And again, noticing how that feels through the middle of yourself. So always when I come onto hands and knees to do these movements, I tend to start with a few cat movements. So rounding my back to the ceiling, letting my head hang, seeing how it feels to stretch out my lower back in this way. A little bit of dipping my spine down to the floor, seeing how much movement there is there today. And then I'll probably move on to a little bit tail wagging so imagining you have a tail and wagging it from side to side but also dog owners here so obviously if you have a dog it's um <laughs> you know what to do so this yeah just side to side movement of your pelvis imagining it could be a fish's tail that you're swishing from side to side and this can really help to release some of that lower back tightness so when you've done that a few times come back to cat a couple more times and just see if it feels a little bit easier to round and dip. So we're looking to, I suppose, increase our mo the mobility around the middle of ourselves. The mobility, the choice, 
the freedom in movement. And whenever you round your back to the ceiling neck, so whenever you do your rounded up cat, stay rounded and rock your hips back over your heels and come into child pose. And just settle down into child pose. Let your elbows come to the ground. Um, and maybe your forehead touches the ground. Just let yourself have a quiet breath or two in child pose. And so child pose, as we know, is that lovely place for the lower back to just passively lengthen a little bit. And then from hands and knees, no, so I'm from child pose, sorry, we're going to come on to hands and knees. So back to hands and knees. And you're going to lengthen each leg out and turn behind you. So have your shoulders over your hands, lengthen one leg back, tuck your toes under and really let the back of the leg open. Back of the knee, the calf lengthens out, the back of the ankle. And do the same on both sides. So again, you're lengthening one leg behind you, tucking your toes under, really letting the back of the leg open. And just notice when you're doing this, are your feet on the mat? If they've slid off the mat, come forwards a bit, because we're now going to do plank pose, everyone's Friday morning favourite. <laughs> so shoulders over the wrists. Tracy, just you know, be attentive, don't stay there too long if it feels a strain on your back. So take one leg back behind you, and then try and keep your pelvis where it is as you add leg number two in. And we'll have a few breaths in plank. It's not the easiest place to breathe in. The two are best ability, breathing in plank pose, really stretching the away, feet and the ankles are working in the legs as well as the arms. Good, I think that might be enough. <laughs> Let the knees come down, keep your toes tucked under, walk your hands into your knees, and then pick your knees up off the floor. So you're going to be in a little sort of squat, but with your heels off the ground. You could just do a little bit of rocking here on the balls of your feet. So we can give the balls of our feet a little bit of a massage. And then from here, we're going to make our way into a, back into a forward bend. So you're going to send your heels down and your sit bones up towards the ceiling until the whole of your footprints on the ground. Good. Let your head go. Again, Tracy, you might want to bring your elbows to your thighs. If it's fine for your lower back, you're going to touch the backs of your hands together and roll up into standing, trailing your hands up the front of your body. Otherwise, that's it, walk your hands. That's it. So trail your hands up, the back of the hands touching, bring your hands all the way up the front of your body, all the way up to the ceiling. Exhale. Down in a prayer pose. So hope you were back where we start. We're going to go down and do that same little sequence again. So let a breath come in. As you exhale, take your arms down and then up. Drop your shoulders away from your ears, let a breath come in. Then the knees bend a little bit, the elbows gather in. <sighs> down into your forward bend. Let your head go, have a breath or two here. And then on into dog pose when you're ready. And just, yeah, when you arrive in dog, how does your second dog pose feel? I was going to suggest a little dog pose variation here, which you can do or you could completely ignore, which is to take your feet wider apart, possibly as wide as the narrow edge of your mat, and then bending your knees quite a lot. So I'm just seeing how that feels and whether that gives you a bit more freedom in your shoulders. So wide feet, knees bent, having a couple of breaths. From doing that, you can then sort of come into more of a sort of normal, normal dog and just see how your normal dog feels. Good, before coming back down onto hands and knees. So yes, that's it. I think when we come down onto hands and knees, good point, Tracy. When you come down onto hands and knees, this time come onto your elbows and your forearms, just to give your hands a little rest. We're gonna do some cats and some tail wagging. We can do that on our forearms. So rounding your back to the ceiling, dipping your spine down to the floor. Once your wrists have eased out, you can come back onto hands and knees if you like, rather than being on your elbows. You can come to a bit of tail wagging. So how does it feel again to imagine you have a tail? 
to wag your tail to the left and to the right. And then a little bit more cat, a little bit more rounding your back to the ceiling, dipping your spine to the floor. And once more, you're going to come into child pose from your rounded cat. So really round your back up to the ceiling, let your head hang, head hang. And then keep looking back behind you towards your feet as you bring your hips back over your heels into child. Settle your elbows down onto the ground and maybe your forehead touches the ground. Good. That's it. Really let the shoulders soften, Tracy. So, yeah, well, oh, that's nice. Yeah, so just give yourself a moment in child and check in with your shoulders and arms. Are they as relaxed as they can be? We're all day tensing up with the prospect of one more plank pose. So from child pose, come back onto hands and knees and lengthen each leg out behind you in turn. So again, we're sort of leaning down through our arms and our hands. We're lengthening one leg out. And I just always think this is this lovely feeling through the back of the leg where we get to lengthen out. I suppose stretch into all those dark corners back of the knee, back of the ankles. Okay, and then we can move from here on into plank pose. So just to make sure you've got room on your mat when you lengthen your legs back. Make sure your shoulders are over your hands. You can lengthen one leg back, and when we add the second leg in plank, we're just trying not to move our pelvis up or down. It just stays where it is. Using our feet, our legs to help. This feeling of stretching back through the heels, as we rest down through the arms and try to breathe. <laughs> Maybe for another breath or two. Good. And then let the knees come down. Keep your toes tucked. Walk your hands into your knees. Come up onto the balls of your feet. So again, we're in this little squat, little mini squat where the heels are probably not down on the ground. I'm just gonna hop forwards your space behind me, a little bit of rocking on the balls of your feet. That's it, good. Good. And so from here, we'll send the heels down and the sit bones up and come into a forward bend. So again, in your forward bend, if you need to rest your elbows on your thighs to support your lower back, you can do. And we'll roll up into standing, but if you need to walk your hands up your thighs, you can do. So touch the back of your hands together. As you exhale, roll up into standing, take your arms straight up to the ceiling. Just be locked, long and tall, breathe in, exhale. Good. Okay, all the way back to prayer pose. Have a little shake out. I just want to show you the next thing we're going to do because it's going to be a little dog sequence. And the first thing is probably un it's unfamiliar. I don't think I've taught this before. So we're going to come into forward bend and dog. That's obviously familiar. And then in dog pose, you're going to cross one leg around the back of the other leg. Yeah. And then from here, you're going to see what's it like to walk your hands in towards your feet. You might not get all the way there, but you might. Okay. And then, and then I'll add a couple of other things in. We'll do that on both sides and we'll also come into a one-legged dog. So, from the back of your mat, just as we've been doing, let's go down into a forward bend. We could bring our hands into prayer pose, let's do that because that's nice. Let a breath come in as we exhale, take our arms down and then up. Let the breath come in, long and tall. Gather your elbows in, roll down into your forward bend. And then from your forward bend, walking your hands forwards into dog pose. So you could, I mean, I always tend to then. So what I would do then is bring one foot into the center. So one foot comes into the center and then you cross the other leg around the back of it. You could cross your leg around the front of it. I tend to go around the back. So you've crossed your ankles and then you see what's it like to start to walk your hands in towards your feet. And you might not get all the way. Or you might so just sort of see where you get to into this sort of cross footed forward bend. If it's very easy, you can try and then bring your feet so they're level, that makes it a bit harder. 
And then you can walk back into dog pose and you can try crossing your feet the other way. So this will get, I'll easily forget this. So which foot is good in front? So again, which um, one foot in the center, the other foot crossing around the back of the foot. And then you're walking your hands in towards your feet into this sort of cross legged forward bend. Just sort of see where you get to. Can you get the whole of your feet on the floor? Um, it's quite a big stretch for the back of your hamstrings. Let your head go. You're right there, Tracy. Wrists. Yeah. yeah. And then from there, come back into a normal dog pose. And then from that normal dog pose, so normal dog pose, walk back into a normal forward with your feet a little distance apart. And from this normal forward bend, you're going to bend your knees forwards over your feet and come down into a squat. And it's fine if your heels come up. Let yourself come down into a squat. Just, yeah, it's fine if the heels come up. Let, um, what am I going to say? Let the weight of your pelvis drop down so your lower back then comes out. And then we're going to come back into a forward bend back into dog pose and do your one leg dogs if you want to. Tracy, if, you, if you've had enough with your hands, you can always just come into child pose, okay, to see how you feel. Or you can come into a forward bend. So come back into a forward bend. If your wrists have had enough dog pose, you could just do the forward bend. If you want to come into dog pose, and then in dog pose, you can, if you like, do your one leg dogs. So, which is sort of obviously, as they sound, <laughs> lifting one leg up. I tend to like to roll the pelvis and then reach into the heel. That's nice. So really when you've lifted your leg, it's whatever you feel drawn to doing with that raised leg that makes you feel expansive in your body. I'd say joyful, desperately joyful. Um, <laughs> expansive, alive, <sighs> letting the head go. Good, good, good. And then whenever you've had enough of those, folding down very nice into child pose or kneeling for a couple of quiet breaths. Lovely. Very nice. We'll just, yeah, settle down for a couple of quiet breaths. We're going to do a little bit more breathing in a moment than sitting, but just for now, either in child pose or kneeling, just gathering your attention to your breathing. And feel the breath come in, feel the breath leave you. Just allow everything else to fall away. Retreat into the background and bring the feeling of the breath into the forefront of your awareness. So from here, let's just come and sit. So we've got our back against a wall or a sofa. Um, just so we can come and focus on our breathings for a few minutes. So you can move your mat if you want to. Well, you've got a choice of sofas, Tracy, you've got the wall. And I just suggest have your legs, once you've got your back against a stable surface, have your legs long and a little bit wide, not massively wide, just give your legs a little roll with the bent leg things of child. Good. And then we're going to bring our hands back to, so if you remember back in standing, we had our hands on our low ribs and we did a few cycles of breath. And we're going to come back to that focus here in sitting. So perhaps close your eyes and have a couple of cycles of breath, feeling the movement of your breathing in your low ribs. But as you breathe in, you feel your ribs widen. As you exhale, you feel your ribs narrow. Maybe one more cycle of breath, just like that, just feeling the breath movement of the breath. And then 
what I'd like you to do for the next couple of cycles of breath here is to pause in the middle of your out breath and see how that feels. So you're going to maybe let an X, no, pause in the middle of your inhalation, sorry. So let an out breath leave you. Then start to breathe in a little bit and feel your ribs widen. And then pause that in breath for a moment and then carry on breathing in to the end of your inhalation. And then just let the out breath go. And then start breathing in a little bit, feel your ribs widen into your hands. Pause for a moment and then carry on breathing in. So feel your ribs widen a bit more. And then let the out breath go. Now we're gonna do maybe three more cycles of this pausing breath. You could choose to keep your hands on your low ribs to help you, or you could just rest your hands on your thighs. So again, as your breath comes in, you're going to let maybe half the breath come in, and then pause your in-breath for a moment, and then breathe in to the end of the inhalation. And then just a nice, long, relaxed out breath. And then again, doing the same thing. If you feel really comfortable with this, you could pause twice in your inhalation. So you could breathe in you know, roughly a third of your in-breath, pause, breathe in another third, pause, breathe in to the end of the inhalation. And then again, long, relaxed out breath. So one more of these pausing breaths in your own times is the biloma breathing. So pausing once or twice in your inhalation. And then a long, relaxed out breath. And then let that pausing breath go. We're going to come back to it later on in the class. What I'd like you to do now is bring your feet into cobbler pose with your back against the wall. And just have a couple of, just let yourself have a couple of sort of normal cycles of breath here. So you can rest your hands on your thighs and just feel the movement of the in and the out breath somewhere in your body. Okay, one more cycle of breath in cobbler pose here, and then we're going to come to a few couple, a few more movements. Okay, so from there, come to back onto your mat if you moved away from it. Lean back onto your hands and just give your legs a bit of a length and out. Um, we're going to come to a couple of things which I think are probably nobody's favourites, so it's not good, good sales there, but some things we haven't, <laughs> we haven't done for a while. So the first one, Tracy, just take it easy with the wrists. The first one, we're going to have a little exploration in, in here. So you want to be in this sort of sitting there position, that's it, stand your feet on the floor. We're thinking about our lovely table pose. So we're going to think some of some hand positions. Start with your fingers pointing out to the side because that's the easiest. And then all we're going to do for these first ones, let me get rid of him, is let the pelvis come off the floor a bit. So my block is just charged with Otto. Otto. On your bed. On your bed. Come on. Bed. Bed. On bed. How did you say? Dog pose or anything. Yes, so, so sorry, that's an interruption. So fingers pointing out to the side, we're sinking into our feet. We're not bringing our pelvis up as far as we can. We could just sway a little bit, forwards and back, and try to have our feet well planted on the ground. Okay, come down. Try turning your fingers now, to pointing in the same direction as your toes, and see how that feels. It's a bit of more of a stretch for the wrists. And again, let the pelvis come up a bit, Try and really plant the feet on the 
that's it, good. <laughs> and again, you could just sort of swing a little bit forwards and back. Good. Okay, maybe come down just before we do the final hand position, give your hands a little shake out. So the final hand position is turning the fingers to point back away behind you. The other challenge I think with table pose, and we'll come back into this in a moment after we've done something else, is to get your feet and your hands in the right position. I've often got my feet too close to my hands. Again, just do a little bit of swinging. We'll take this a bit further in a moment. Good. Toughen your shoulder. Yeah, 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 in that shoulder. shoulder. I'm gonna rest mm -hmm. Okay. Shoulder. Good. Well, we're going to do something. Okay, so leave that for the moment. If you want to do more with your chance in a moment, mm -hmm. we're going to come to something that doesn't involve the arms. So from here, leaning forwards, we're going to be thinking about our back rounding out and sliding our hands from our feet towards our knees and just looking down. So we're looking down at the floor. And then as we slide our hands towards our knees, we're looking more down at our belly. And we're just thinking about the back staying rounded out. Good, very nice. Yes, and the other, that's, that is sort of where we're going to be going. And <laughs> which would be, we can just try a couple of times, we can go. So we're rolling back and then at a certain point, we let our feet pick up off the floor and we could then just come back up again. So obviously we will be straightening the legs out, but let's just try a couple of times going back. And I think it's quite good not to leave it too late to pick your feet up. Maybe can we come back up again? We haven't done these ones for ages. Mm. <laughs> and they're really hard work. So, oh, coming up again. Let's just try one more. So our, in, our intention here is to have our heels and our shoulders at the same height. Um, we're going into a low boat pose. So this time, see what happens if you try and lengthen your legs out, but you're trying to, you're like a sort of canoe, I suppose. A low Oh, And then come back up. And yes, we're gonna come back into table pose, but if that's not good for either of your shoulders, you could come and do a plank pose instead. That's more tolerable. Okay. So, <laughs> so if you're gonna do table pose again, Think about how we have the hands. You've got the choice of the fingers pointing towards the toes, fingers pointing out to the sides, or fingers pointing away from you. And this time when you come into your table pose, you can try taking your pelvis a bit higher. I personally wouldn't let my head hang back. Other people might do. I'm just really thinking about trying to lift my pelvis. So I've got that flat table shape. So my pelvis is level with my shoulders and my knees. It is a challenge for the neck, so I wouldn't stay there too long. I come down, I'd sit down and give my hands a shake out. Now there's a far, further table. Yeah, Kate, you're looking like you're enjoying that. There's a further table challenge, which again, we haven't done this one for ages. So there's one last one I'll show you. This one, I tend to have my fingers slightly angled between out to the sides and back. And in this one, you might remember this one, Kate, we then come onto one arm. And actually, once you're in that one, it feels a bit more pleasant, but it's coming into it, which is more of a challenge. It's not, possibly your shoulder's not going to mind that much. I don't think I could answer <laughs> anywhere near that today. <laughs> That's it, very nice. So we, uh, yeah, so once you're in that one-armed one, it can feel really lovely. Just the getting in there might not feel so nice. That's it, really reach into your fingertips and send your knees away from you. Good. Good, lovely. Beautiful. And then we can just lean back on our hands, give our legs a little roll out, and we'll come back to both, <laughs> both pose again. This time after our boat pose, this is our low boat, we'll let our set will lie down, we'll collapse onto the floor after doing it a couple of times. So come back to this sort of starting point, we want our back to round out. As we go back, I do think we want to not wait too long to pick our feet up, I've gone too low this time. So yeah, so it's a little bit of experimenting, how low do we go, when do we pick our feet up, when do we lengthen our legs out? How can we find this sort of low, long balance? Oh, good. So remember, we're trying to get shoulders and heels 
at the same height. And what we're really doing here is lengthening out the lower back. Obviously getting abdominals to work. Oh, oh, there's an otto again, right. Do, <laughs> when you've done your boat pose, do you collapse onto the floor? Bed, bad boy. Come on, bed, 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 bed. Uh, your bed. Yes, collapsing onto the floor. It's not completely time to go to sleep. We, <laughs> we're going to do some things on our backs, but first of all, Yes, whatever you like, just for a moment or two, whatever you want to do, within reason. So things I would suggest could be letting your head roll from side to side. So particularly if you were doing table pose, it would be nice to let your head roll. A little bit to the right, a little bit to the left. Good. And then we could also, we, we could settle the head down in the centre in a comfortable position. And we could come back to bending the knees and standing the feet on the floor. And letting the knees tilt to the right and to the left. Good, so like we did at the beginning of class and just seeing how that feels. And then this time we'll do a different variation from the ones we did earlier. You're going to pause in the middle, let your right knee fold into your chest, and then take your right knee out to the side and bring your right ankle to rest on your left thigh, close to your knee, yeah? And then you're going to start to rock side to side on your standing foot. Again, if you want to bring that standing foot more towards the centre, you can do. That's it. Good. Very nice. Let's see how that moves. Okay, bring your ankle onto your the front of your thigh rather than ankle. Oh, that's the one. Yeah. Good. Good. Now, Tracy, you just stay with this, I think. So some of you might like to from here. Pause in the centre. You're going to pick your left foot off the floor and catch your hands around the back of your left thigh. Yes, yeah? so you're folding your legs in towards you. And once you've done that, you might find that you want to rock a little bit from side to side, or you just want to have a couple of quiet breaths and focus on the sort of folding in. You've obviously got that sort of pigeon pose feeling through our right buttock. And this nice lengthening out through the lower back. Whenever you've had enough of this side, you can release your legs. You can take them up to the ceiling or you can lengthen your legs out on the floor. So you can quite nice to take your legs up to the ceiling and give them a shake out. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. So if you bring both feet back to the floor, fold your left knee into your chest. Turn the left knee out to the side, left ankles on the right thigh, close to your knee. And then let me come back to that tilting side to side on our standing foot. And yeah, all these little rocking movements are, you know, very soothing, you know, soothing for us, soothing for our body, soothing for our whole mind, mind nervous system, self, good. And then you can carry on with the rocking and also whenever you want to, you can pause in the center, pick your right foot off the floor, catch your hands around the back of your right thigh, fold, fold in here. And again, once you fold it in, you might like to rock a little bit still from side to side or just be quiet, quiet breathing in the center. And Trent, yes, and if, you're, if you haven't folded in, you could bring your, Let's see, I'm going to get very confused left and right. You can bring your hand onto the knee that's going, I think it's left hand onto the left knee and encourage that knee away from you just gently. Yeah, that's it. And when you've had enough time in this, 
you can release your legs and you can either lengthen them out on the floor or take them up to the ceiling and give them a shake out. And in fact, what I would like you to do now is end up with your legs long on the ground. And feel the length of your body here from the back of your head through to your heels. And just to keep us, keep us alert, we're going to be coming into a, our side balancing movement, anantasana. So you're going to feel the length of yourself on your back. And then I'd like you to roll onto one side. And you're going to be long on your side. And maybe roll onto the side. You can obviously see, see better from what we're doing. So we've rolled onto our side. We're trying to be long like we're on our backs. I've got my head propped up in my hand. But you could make a little pillow of your bottom arm. You could lengthen that bottom arm out. It doesn't matter too much. The top hand to start with is going to be on the floor in front of you. And I'd like you to do a little bit of rocking forwards and back. So we're trying to just settle ourselves down through the side of our body. If you come up onto your fingers and just look down the length of your body towards your feet, you should be able to see your toes, but not your ankles. If you can see your ankles and your feet are too far forwards and you're in a bit of banana shape. Okay, let's see if we can settle on our side and bring our top arm to rest along the top side of our body. So this is a little bit of a balance balancing through the side of ourselves. Okay, good. From there, we can move on into tree pose with our top leg. You might want to catch your ankle this time. So unlike when we were in standing, you've got a hand free to do that. Good, good balancing, that's nice. That's, yeah, that's it, see if you can bring that hand off the floor. And then from there, we're going to bring that top knee towards the armpit and the top side of the body. Now at this point, if you feel really wobbly, you can bend your bottom knee and slide it forwards. Otherwise keep extending into your bottom heel. So that bottom leg stays very alert and long. And then we lengthen out the top leg. So you could catch onto your big toe, your trouser leg, your ankle, whatever works for you. That's it. And let that top leg lengthen out, good. And keep sending your awareness into your heels. Good. Yes, and if it, yes, if that aggravates your hip pain, then just yeah, don't do it. Come back to a place. Good. Maybe another breath or so, trying to be settled down through the side of the body. And then we can make our way down the way we came into it. So back, having our knee to our armpit, back into tree pose, back into having two long legs. Very nice. And then before we come on to side two, you're going to roll onto your belly and just settle on your belly. So I've got one hand on top of the other and my cheek resting on my top hand, but it doesn't really matter, whatever's comfortable. All I'd like you to do here is give your pelvis a bit of a wiggle to help you settle there. And then you're going to have a few breaths lying on your belly. And really that focus on the back of your body, the back of your rib cage, because when we're lying on our belly, our breath, you know, we breathe more into our back lungs where we actually have more lung capacity. That's one or two more cycles of breath, really just seeing if you can feel the back of your rib cage responding to your breathing. That feeling of the inhalation widening your back ribs. And then we will make our way onto side two of Anantasana. So, of all the things you've got, those different options for supporting your head, long arm, bent elbow. Start with your top hand on the floor in front of you, a little bit of rolling forwards and back so we're thinking about settling how can we settle through the side of our body does it always feel comfortable good again we can come onto our fingertips and just look down the length of our body we should be able to see our toes but not our ankles extend into your heels particularly the heel of the bottom leg so that we just keep that sort of alertness and then our top foot can come on into tree pose and we can, yes, use our 
hands maybe to bring our heel up, our inner thigh, and then we're balancing. So we take it off, front hand off the floor. Good. Very nice. And then from here, we can move on to bringing that knee towards our arm. Just have a breath or two here, really settling. Of course, you can bend the bottom knee, slide that leg forward. And then we'll lengthen out the top leg wherever you want to catch on to it, wherever's helpful. And it could be your calf, it could be the back of your knee, ankle. Just play around with toe, wherever you can catch onto your leg. You know, and if the hip does, you know, the hips can get a bit creaky in this, so you can always sort of release your knee, lengthen the leg out again. Good. And again, just that sense of the awareness traveling all the way into both heels. And we'll make our way then slowly down, knee back to the armpit, back through tree pose. Good back into two long legs. And then one more time, you're going to roll onto your belly. And just see, it's not always easy for all of us to be on our belly. Um, again, if you feel a lot of pressure, if you know, if your breasts are being squashed, you can always put a folded blanket um, below the breasts. So that there's less pressure there. That's the possibility. Wiggling the pelvis. And just, you know, finding a place for your arms that's as comfortable as possible for you. And just by coming onto our belly more regularly, we can maybe feel more comfortable here. I just like to see, obviously if you're someone who sleeps on your belly, you're going to be very happy if you can sleep. Just see if you can have a couple of quiet breaths here, resting your head down if that's possible. Let the breath Come in, let the breath And then if you're happy on your belly, you can stay there for another breath or two, but from there, rolling onto your back. So you're sort of keen, I'm very keen. And one of the nice things about being on your belly, if you particularly don't like it, is when you come onto your back, it feels really nice to be on your back. <laughs> Good. So arrive on your back and we're going to do, come back to our biloma breathing now on our back. So you can lie either with your legs long or your knees bent, whichever you prefer. And it might be nice to bring your hands onto your belly or somewhere on the front of your body. So it really helps I find it really helps me to focus on my breath when my hands are on the front of my body and I can feel the movement of the breath. And this time we're going to be adding our pauses into our exhalation. And it's a little bit different because we add a pause at the end of the in-breath before we start exhaling. So let's just Let's just have a normal out breath. So let the out breath leave you, no pauses. And then let the inhalation come in. And at the end of your inhalation, you're going to pause for a moment and then start to breathe out. And so maybe to start with, we'll breathe out half of our out breath. We'll pause in the middle of the exhalation. And then we'll carry on breathing out to the end of the out breath. And then receive your inhalation. Just a lovely, long, relaxed in breath. At the end of the in breath, you pause for a moment. And then you're going to exhale half or thereabouts of your breath. Pause. And then carry on breathing out to the end of your out breath. Just do that a couple more times on your own and then we'll develop it just a little. So the breath comes in, we pause, and then we pause once in the middle of the out breath. And the most important thing is to keep a sort of relaxed, 
relationship with your breathing. If it's starting to feel tense, then just, just soften a little bit and, and just, yeah, just, just don't push yourself. So for our next pausing out breath, we're going to try to add a couple of pauses into the exhalation. So you're going to let the breath come in. <clears throat> you're going to pause at the end of your in-breath. You're going to exhale, you know, maybe a third of your out-breath. Pause. Exhale again, maybe another third. Pause. And then carry on breathing out to the end of the out -breath. And we'll just try that twice more. So letting the breath come in, lovely, relaxed, beautiful in-breath. Pausing at the end of that in-breath. And then as you exhale, pausing twice during your out-breath. once more in your own time, receiving the in-breath, pausing at the end of your inhalation, and pausing twice during your out-breath, if that feels okay. You can pause just once if that's better. And then just let all of that go. Let your awareness expand outward from your breathing to sense the whole of your body on the ground. We're going to do one last little rocking movement and then we'll just have a couple of quiet breaths after that. So if you legs so along, bend your knees and stand your feet on. A few times come to just tilting your knees to the right and to the left. We've done this a lot and then we'll add in a little variation. That's it, the knees to the right and to the left. Good. And then pause in the centre and cross your arms over your chest. That's it. So now let the knees and the elbows and the head all rock to the right and to the left, that's it. So you're rolling across the back of your body from side to side. Very nice, good. That will bring the shoulder one across to your arms. Oh, sorry, yeah, it's all right, I missed that much. Have, it's all right, have, this, have one arm on top, this one, we give ourselves a hug. That's it, so elbows, head, good. So are you trying to get out of the sun? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Drifted off for a minute. <laughs> Did it hear what you said? No, drifting off is, is good. It's, good. Oh, it's really nice. We've got some sun. Mm, yeah. Lovely. So that's very nice. So just once, twice more, rocking from side to side. And then we'll finish just settling quietly for a breath or two. So the opportunity to drift off again <laughs> if you so if you so wish. Good or Seem to be getting, yes, getting some doggy attention, Kate. <sighs> yes, so just really settling now and allowing yourself to just be, to be with the flow of your breath, to be with the feeling of your body in contact with the ground, the air around. Sounds, light,
don't, you don't have to move. You can stay where you are. So whatever you're doing, you can start to move on that ground. And thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you.